What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Marissa Robinson, Executive Director for DEI at Georgetown. Throughout my career, I have participated in various NCAA leadership development programs, including the Career and Sports Forum, the Postgraduate Internship Program, and currently the Dr. Charles Wickham Leadership Institute. These programs have taught me that leadership takes work and effort. They have reminded me that as leaders, it is our responsibility to continue to grow, challenge ourselves, and encourage those around us to do the same. However, as we continue to grow and to pour into others, it is also imperative to take care of ourselves. Remember, you cannot sustain a movement by sacrificing self-care. So provide yourself some grace and then get back after it. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. My name is Kendi Hilliard, and I'm a current volleyball player at Illinois State University, and today I will be guest hosting this episode of One Question. On this podcast, we have Patty Phillips, the CEO of Women Leaders in College Sports since 2010. Hi, Ms. Patty, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Kendi. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. We're inspired by who you are and what you're doing, and I hear you're a sports management major, so make sure you look us up as you're finishing up your degree. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate those kind words. So how we're going to get started today is just you've been a pioneer and a champion for women leaders of all ages, and I would just love to dive into a little more of what makes you tick as a leader. There's been a notion that leadership looks one way, and clearly on this phone call, you're very dynamic and you're high energy. How do you consistently bring your high energy and personality to leadership? Well, um, first of all, I hope that we're moving past this notion that leadership has to look one way, um, because I think, you know, we all believe in, in people being authentic as they lead. So my one way is who I am. And I I actually, I have high energy in general, but I also generate energy every morning. And I've talked about this in all of our leadership institutes. I mean, I'm a big believer in kind of managing your energy throughout the day. And so it's something that I practice, first of all. In general, as a human, do I have high energy? Probably. But listen, with leadership, um, it's hard to maintain that all the time. I think the other key piece for me um, and, and I hope this for everyone is to be passionate about what you do. That brings me energy. I love what we do here. I'm inspired by the fact that I get to come into work every day and make a difference. And I believe we are making a difference. And there's huge possibilities with how we can do that every day and moving forward. So for me, you know, how do I bring high energy and personality? It is who I am, but I work on it. That's the other, that's the other important piece. So um, I love what we do here. Yes, ma'am, for sure. And you mentioned like how you work on your constant leadership skills and especially since you're surrounded by so many leaders and your mentors to so many leaders. How do you find your leadership voice when you're around all these leaders? Do you feed off of them? Are they giving you the same fuel that you're putting into them? What is your process there? Yeah, you know, I think throughout your career, your leadership voice, how you, as you really, your presence, it's how you show up in the universe and it should reflect your values, right? So there's a huge self-awareness piece that is important there. And my values are belief and potential growth mindset. Um, health is a value of mine. So that reflects back to kind of this energy management piece and generating energy every day. So, you know, our voice should be who we are. So there's a huge self-reflection piece there. And then it becomes your presence and your presence is really how you show up in the world. And it goes back to authenticity. So these questions are tied together, right? You want to, no matter what leaders you're around, no matter what level, I'm going to communicate with you in the pretty much the same way that I communicate with Ty or anyone else, because it's actually who I am authentically. Um, so the voice, it's a great question. And I think this is something that we work with women to be reflective about. But I think all leaders are constantly striving to understand what their voice is. And people always say, be authentic. I don't think we talk enough about what that means. And it is, you know, it's a reflection of, of your values and who you are and how you align with the leadership at your organization. Um, and so my voice and the, the things I speak on are, are aligned very much with women leaders of college sports. It is who, who we are and what we do. 
if I was in a different role, some of what my leadership voice was focused on would sound a little bit different. But no matter what, it would be authentically me coming from a place, you know, coming from where I value things and and the impact that I want to have in the world. I also think, honestly, it, it continues to evolve over time. Kendi, you're just developing your voice now if you're on SAC and as a leader on your volleyball team, and you'll take those instances into your first job, into your second job. And over time, you continue to finesse that because over time, you're going to become more aware of who you are and how you interact in the world. Yes, ma'am. And I love what you just said there because we have, there's a stigma that we're always learning and growing even more with bigger and better topics just with within the industry. And I would just love to hear you talk about like when you were a coach and even rebranding women leaders, how Mm -hmm. are you, you've always in your career turned nothing into something as sometimes we would say. So Mm -hmm. what are your, what is like one to two of your key ingredients of your secret sauce, as I would say it for success? Secret sauce. I love it. You know, I, well, first of all, and this goes back to, it's it's interesting. All these questions are somewhat connected, but it goes back to something I said earlier. I'm a huge believer in potential. Huge. I call myself a possibilitarian and I just believe that uh, there's just potential everywhere you look. That comes from a growth mindset. And I think if I look back, I'm trying to figure out if that is something that was developed over time. I'm sure it was throughout my childhood and my early days as an athlete. Um, But I, that is, so that's who I am. So when I go into a program or an organization, I actually see the potential of what it can be. And I believe in that. So seeing is one thing, believing in it and then being willing to put the work in. I am a builder. Uh, by nature, if you look back, a building is not easy. It is not for everybody. It actually takes a different energy and it's, it's gritty. It's completely gritty. And honestly, leadership is gritty. Um, but for me, it is seeing the potential of what can be. And we're constantly doing that at Women Leaders with everything we do. In fact, right now, the team's having a, a, a post conversation from our president search from roundtable. What worked? What could we do better? Every single thing we do because we can always get better. So I, I think the biggest thing for me is potential. I'm a possibilitarian. I didn't create that word, but I love it. I don't know if it's in the dictionary or not, but I do believe anything's possible. You know, we're recording this now on a phone that, you know, we would have years ago never imagined could do the things it does now. So anything's possible in the universe. With that, it takes work, strategy, and continual energy to make those things come to life. So hopefully that answers your question. I, I'm just a believer in, in the universe and what what is out there, what's possible. Yes, ma'am. I actually love that term, possibletarian. Possibletarian. And you know, so you're an athlete, you get this. This is what we do as athletes. We set, and as a coach, you set goals on what you want it to be. So whatever your season is that you come in, you set a goal. So everyone's kind of coalescing around that energy. And if you don't get there, you took steps to get there. If your goal is to make it to the NCAA tournament or your conference championship, but it, it, it lays the foundation for the following year to, to take another step. Right. And so you're kind of creating something out of nothing, no matter what, whether it's with the team you know, that's all these individuals come together and you create a team that then has potential to do something. Same thing with organizations and with programs. There's you, you, you see what is possible and you have to put the pieces together and take the steps necessary to get there. I just love this. I love this conversation. And just to shift gears a little bit, of course, this is the year of Title IX. Yeah. yeah. 50th anniversary. And because it is the anniversary what do you think are some continued improvements we can continue to make? Well, what isn't? It'd be easier to say what isn't an improvement. And actually, we have lots of improvements we have to make. You know, Title IX opened doors and created awareness. Though, to me, In my mind, those are the two things, you know, and it did it through legislation and all sorts of other things. But we're not there yet. So 
and this it's a great year with the 50th because these things are bubbling up. There's more attention on it again. Where are we? Kind of the measuring sticks. But we need equity in pay. I love that we just saw that happen with the U.S. National Women's Soccer Team. And as Billie Jean King quote, you know, tweeted today, it sh- or, and actually, no, it was Hillary Clinton. It shouldn't take a lawsuit to make that happen. So we aren't there yet where, you know, equal work with genders gets equal pay. So equity needs to happen and from our organizational perspective. You know, hiring practices need to be more equitable. Hiring practices. So the, you know, the pools and how search committees are created and then the actual hiring. And listen, we've made progress. We track that. We've made progress, but we're not there. Ultimately, I think we would all hope and Title IX covers many categories, right? So we're talking, you know, from my uh, perspective and this organization's perspective about women's opportunity and leadership. We want and we believe that the leadership and all organizations should reflect the populations, right? In coaching, in athletic directors, in commissioners, and then you go up and then on out into CEOs of businesses, politics, like our leadership needs to reflect the populations and we're not there yet. So it's a great time to um, reflect and celebrate. Uh, Title IX has certainly helped us move the needle. And now we've all got to look at each other and go, all right, we got, let's go. Like it's time. It's time to make more substantial change. But I am super thankful for our, you know, four fathers and mothers that came together to create that law that again, brought awareness and open doors. And we still obviously have a lot of work to do. Yes, ma'am, for sure. And I'm just sitting here on the interview with you now. Um, just thinking from a student athlete perspective and all the work you've done, um, would you ever like on your podcast consider interviewing student athletes who are currently breaking barriers and or who are potentially, since you're all about potential, going to break some more barriers? Well, I love that question. And if we were going to do that, I'd probably I'd start with you. And so it, it, it's a great question. And here's the truth. Who we interview on our podcast are, you know, on some categories, some are former student athletes and some are the women that are overseeing the student athletes. So our organization is women leaders in college sports. And here's why we do that, Kendi, because no one else has done it. Like more people are doing it now. When we started our podcast, you know, a, a pillar of who we are and what we do is that we celebrate our women leaders. We also believe you have to see it to be it. So we are super intentional about who we bring on our podcast with uh, divisional representation, with ethnic representation, with actually, you know, we're, they're not all ADs and commissioners, but they are women that are leading in the business of college sports. And then we're, we're pulling in some other leaders in now so that student athletes like you can see a path to leadership because that's who we are. And we, you know, I know the NSA does great work with SAC and other organizations and a lot of campuses and what Ty's doing is great. So I feel like there are opportunities for female student athletes and not that it's not important, you know, part of leadership. And as you continue on your path is, you know, what, what, what is our lane right now? And we are growing and we are, you know, wanting to keep our women engaged and our members. And we want you to be able to go to women leaders podcast and say, Hey, you know, I relate to her journey. So that means I see more potential in what I can do. So I love the question. And you know what? We never say never, but I just want you to know the why of how we got to where we are and why we do it. But you never know. Just kind of reflecting on all that I've done here at ISU, just with being on SAC and then being on a few Mm -hmm. hiring committees and in grad school, of course, and just being a student athlete. And I'm sure you're very multifaceted as well. So how do you balance all these commitments in into like becoming a professional and into a leadership role yourself? I love that question. I think it's really important for all leaders. We say for women, but it's actually really important for our leaders, all leaders, especially right now. But it is a, I mean, it's a commitment to managing energy. And then after energy, it's managing your life. So this whole life balance, we're not using that. It's life integration. It's life integration. It's life integration and work integration. So every day, you know, I have a whole morning routine I go through 
And then as it relates to work, I go through my priorities every day. I, every single day, I'm looking again at priorities and that's how fast things come. It's all great. It lays out on the calendar and there's very few times I have white space in my calendar, which is something I try to work on. I have a hard time saying no and it fills up really quickly, but it goes back to your question about, you know, why, why not expand the podcast? We can barely keep up with where we are. So the other thing is one of my values is excellence in this organization. We believe we will do everything we do best in class or we won't do it. So we have to prioritize and make sure we have operational excellence in all of our um, categories, all of our lines of leadership, our members feel it, and that whatever we're doing, we're doing it in, in the best in class way because our members deserve it. And so that takes constant reprioritizing and recommitting to what is most important for us. Overall, we set our yearly goals and make sure that we're moving in those directions. We talk about quarterly, what we're doing. We have a cadence to our cycle and our year. I do it weekly and honestly daily. And so, and you know what that's like, you do it as a student athlete. You have to constantly be looking at your calendar and managing that. But I will tell you, I think one thing that we talk about with women, you do it as a student athlete. You know, the night before a game, you should be getting sleep. You think about what meals you're eating, your hydration, your food, and, you know, and then you recover after hard workouts. And as corporate athletes, we don't always spend the time thinking about how we have to show up to be the best we can be at work every day. So what you're doing now is going to set you up for success in all of your leadership roles moving forward. Don't forget that. That's why all the research shows, especially for women, the female student athletes are the ones that are are the higher majority of CEOs and they're in the C-suite. They're able to manage all this better because you've been doing it. It doesn't mean that other people can't learn these skills. You, though, have a leg up because you're doing it right now. So kudos to you, my friend. Thank you so much. And I kind of want to go back to what you said earlier about just seeing it firsthand and like seeing it is believing it and representation matters. And also just kind of reflecting on you saying stay in your lane or like get out of the lane. I love both of those references. And um, I'm going to take kind of a page out of your book and just go towards your excellence. And um, so if you had every female student athlete in the room, what advice would you give them? I love it. So you have listened to our podcast. I just think that's the greatest question ever. Honestly, the first thing I would say is you must believe and know that your potential is limitless. Other people say that in different ways. It's about confidence, but it's also this growth mindset. Truly, your potential is limitless and it takes work to reach it. And I think that's the piece that has to be connected and takes work for everyone, no matter what age you are, what gender you are, but to know that you can actually do anything. And, you know, potential I'm fascinated by. So Kendi, when you were doing trainings for volleyball, whatever that is, running or jumping or whatever, and your potential is at a level. And then when you hit that, you, you, you hit that mark, right? What happens to your potential? It goes up. You know, and each year that you're playing, your potential as an athlete goes up as you learn more about the game and as you grow into it. And I find that fascinating, but it didn't happen by just saying my potential is limitless. It happened because you worked. So I think that it's those two things. It's fascinating to think that your potential is so much greater than what you could ever imagine, because every time you reach something, your potential goes up. And it just takes, it takes effort. It takes a growth mindset. It takes a commitment into whatever your craft is to work on that. But yes, the, you know, and anymore, the world's changing. We can do and be anything. Um, we have to believe it. So that takes confidence, growth mindset. And then, um, we have to go out and do it. Confidence, growth mindset, potential excellence. I'm just trying to soak it all in. I feel like I can run through a brick wall at this point. Let's go. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. But um, I really do appreciate you coming on the podcast and just discussing some leadership roles and just discussing you as a leader. And um, I really do appreciate the time you spent here. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. And listen, I'm going to tell something to you. You have potential 
in this kind of venue, interviewing people. You did actually a great job of transitioning through questions and everything. It was a, it was a pleasure for me. So thank you so much, Kendi. It was really a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And for our final closeout, do you have anything else to say? Actually, I have one question for you. Just yeah. one funny question. I follow you on Twitter and um, we mentioned like how high energy you are. But my funny question is, what is your favorite emoji? Oh my gosh, that's so great. That's great because right now you don't see it as much on Twitter but my favorite emoji is the rocket ship because that's where our organization is right now. We are growing. And so we're using that internally. You know, uh, I love the bomb bang, like boom on, uh, on Twitter and the fire. Uh, I'm a heart person as well. So th- those are probably my favorites. Um, I also love the dancing lady cause she has energy. I use them all when I'm running from meetings. I just think they're the greatest thing ever. And it's funny. I was a slow adopter to the emojis. Cause I, you know, it just, I wasn't sure how professional it was. And I, I just think it adds so much. We all work really hard. And I think adding energy in that way, um, especially when we don't get to see each other and communicate that it adds a layer of energy. And I think it's important and I love them. So yeah, rocket ship booms. Let's go women. Let's go fire. You're on fire. Let's do it. Yes, ma'am. And I don't know if anyone else in the audience is ready to run through a brick wall, but I know I definitely am. <laughs> But thank you so much for coming on to the podcast again. We really do appreciate it. And as always, I'm Kendi Hilliard and go you Redbirds. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.